And I thank God for this Sunday to serve him and to love him and to follow after him. These are unprecedented times that we're facing, but God is in control at all times. So we praise God for that. Before I give the message this morning, I want to just say that uh, uh, the office will be open Monday through Thursday. And if you have uh, your tithes or offerings, you can drop them off at the office. Also, you can give online at fgcbellflower.org or by text at 562-444-1056. And if you have any questions, you can call the church office at 562-866-0755. And today I felt the Lord speak to me strongly a, a message for all of you, and I trust the Lord ministers to you today and through these weeks of crisis that we're going through and gives you his grace and his confidence and his faith. This is not a time for us to shrink back. This is a time for us to show who we are as God's people. This is a time for our faith to come alive and to be exuberant and spontaneous for God. We need to exhibit our confidence in the Lord. And uh, I think that uh, Hebrews is such a powerful book because it provides insight to Jesus as our high priest. And I want to look this morning at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 16. So if you have a Bible wherever you are, or it's on your phone, look it up. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 16. And we will read, it says, When people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it. And without any question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who receive the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given us both his oath and his promise. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can take new courage, for we can hold on to his promise with confidence. This confidence is like a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain of heaven into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us. He has become our eternal high priest in the line of Melchizedek. This is how we show who we are, is that we recognize that we have not been redeemed by corruptible things such as silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus. And that without a doubt, God receives us because of Christ and that we have an anchor in Christ. We have a promise of an anchor. We have a covenant of an anchor. And it is secured through the blood of Jesus. And he talks about this anchor that we are anchored to that goes beyond the veil, which tells us it goes to the very center of heaven right to the very throne room of God. Our anchor is not in some outer street of heaven, but in the mountain of God, in the holy temple of God, behind the veil, the Bible says. In other words, the most sacred and holy place that there is in heaven is where our anchor is. Our hope, our confidence is in that anchor that's anchored. He says that Jesus himself went through the curtain and is seated, you know, at the right hand of the Father and that he makes intercession for the saints day and night according to the promise of God. And when we think about this, our hearts are stirred with faith that God is not about to abandon his people, that God is not about to let us down, that God has secured us through a promise and an oath that God always keeps his promises. He is unchangeable. It's impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can take new courage, for we can hold on to his promise with confidence. Hold on to his promise with confidence. Amen. Verse 19 says, this promise is like a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain of heaven into God's inner sanctuary. Here we find that the Lord is promising that those who trust in me, that those who grab hold of this anchor, 
They are anchored. They are secure, as secure as God is himself. Hallelujah. There's no read for, reason for us to be fearful or intimidated or harassed by a spirit of fear. We need to show up with strength, show up with confidence. Amen. Verse 20 says, Jesus now has gone in for us. He's gone into that holy place and he has become our eternal high priest. He has become our eternal high priest. So how in these times of stress and trouble and trial and, and worry and fear and lack of this and lack of that, can we as God's people, we got to turn our eyes to the Lord and recognize that our eyes not only go to the Lord, they go to heaven. They not only go to heaven, they go to the throne room. They go to the eternal holiest place in heaven. And there we have an anchor that's anchored right at the very throne of God. So we can have confidence. We can have boldness. We can trust in the Lord. There's three things that we know as a result of this relationship that we have in God. You know, this is how we show who we are in God, that we don't fall apart, we don't get frantic, we don't get fearful, that we stand in faith and we say, wait a minute, God's in control of it all, and I'm his and he is mine. Aren't you glad you're a Christian? Aren't you glad you love the Lord? Aren't you glad you serve God? Because the peace of God, which passes understanding, just comes on us and fills us and, and flows through our life. And even though we're facing, you know, troublesome times and anxious times and times we've never been in before, we got this wonderful assurance of this anchor that is in heaven. And we're not going to be afraid. We're going to trust in the Lord. Our trust is in the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus and Luke said, when you see these things approaching, break your concentration, lift up your head for your redemption draws nigh. Quit looking at the things that are around you. Quit looking at how many are sick or how many are infected, but lift your eyes up to the Lord and talk to God and let God give you peace and reassurance. But these things, three things that we know are these things. Number one, God is in control at all times. He's in control of this planet. He's in control of your life. He's in control of society. He's in control of kings. He sets them up, puts them down. This did not catch God by surprise. He understands all of it simultaneously at one time. And our God is in control. Number two, we have his word to stand on. We're not out here as orphans, but we can apply the promises of God, the promises of healing, the promise that God will never leave us nor forsake us. We have his word and we're standing on that word. Number three, death is not defeat. What's the worst thing that could happen through this pandemic? You get sick and you die. Well, the, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. How is that a negative? That's a positive. You can't threaten a Christian with heaven. We are people who are citizens of heaven. And we are the people of God that no matter what happens, Jesus said, don't fear him that can kill the body only, but fear him that can kill both body and soul in hell. So we're not going to be afraid of death alone. Physical death is not really physical death. It's just immigration into the presence of God. You just immigrate into the glory of God. So I ask you, what could be the worst thing that could happen? You could pass from this life to the next. But that could happen at any time anyway. We have no assurances. We live day to day not knowing what will come to us. And so we have to rely on the Lord and say, Lord, if whatever happens, happens, even death, you conquered death, hell, and the grave, and I stand on good, solid rock that's anchored at the throne of heaven. And I am not going to worry, not going to fear, I'm not going to let my emotions rule my life. Somebody say amen. 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 And I, I want to sing a little chorus for you that came to me when I was preparing this message. And it, it's old, 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 but it's got a lot of truth in it. And it talks about the anchor that we have in the Lord. So let me get my guitar.
In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid, solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid. Rock. Be very sure your anchor holds. Through this time of testing and trial, make sure you take care of the spiritual. If you don't take care of anything else, take care of your relationship to God. God has promised to take care of us. I want us to pray now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you'll minister to every person that belongs to full gospel, every person watching today. I pray that you'll keep them safe. I pray that you'll keep them from this pandemic. I pray that your angels will be in charge over their life, over their house, and over their families. I speak words of life and blessing and anointing over the power of God in people's lives. Let your presence come over them. Let your spirit sustain them. And most of all, give us peace in the time of trouble because this is why we serve you so we can show our faith and our trust in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. And for the next month, I'll be doing these services here at the church on Sunday morning for all of you. Be strong. Keep full of faith. Keep your prayer life up. Keep your devotional reading up. And we'll see you when God is willing. Amen. God bless you all this morning.